Votre place au concert exclusif donné par Radiohead est réservée. Voilà, il n'y a plus qu'à. Arte. Les Inrocuptibles et Arte atterrissent tout de suite sur Music Planet Tonight. Up there on the voice. It doesn't sound like it. How much did it cost? Okay. Bonsoir et bienvenue au réservoir à Paris pour une nouvelle édition de Music Planet Tonight. Bon. Ce soir, c'est le dernier enregistrement qu'on fait pour cette émission, qui dure déjà depuis deux ans. Et enfin, ce soir, on réalise notre rêve. Ladies and gentlemen, je suis tout simplement heureux, je suis ému, je suis fier de vous annoncer l'arrivée tout de suite, ici, au réservoir, sur Arte, en version réduite et acoustique. The one, the only... Radio Head.
song is called There There. Merci tout le monde.
Cinq membres de Radiohead se sont rencontrés à l'école. Personne, surtout pas eux, ne savait qu'en six albums et douze années d'existence, ils allaient bouleverser le paysage rock et devenir un des groupes les plus importants au monde. Tout au long de leur carrière, la notion de risque a toujours été présente. Chaque album étant différent du précédent, la seule constante restant la voix bouleversante de Tom York. Le dernier CD, Hail to the Thief, offre une synthèse entre le rock électrique et le travail des machines. Radiohead continue to reinvent the rock. Don't say I didn't warn you. Tom and Ed, welcome to Paris. Merci. And thank you so much for coming, firstly. So, tonight, 
only Tom and Johnny will be on stage. So w why? Too much gear. Ah. Much too much gear. Yeah. Too complicated. So what was your spirit when you went in to record the new stuff? It was good. I mean, we, the whole thing was to try and keep it quick, you know. Do it quickly, don't think about it too much, and, um, you know, just do what we've been doing live and, and in the same spirit, and that's what we did, which was, which was new for us, obviously. <laughs> we had a laugh. Yeah. And for the first time, you went to Los Angeles at Los Nigel's Angeles. insistence. Yeah. What, what did you first say when you said, let's go to L.A., boys? Okay. We said, okay, we'll have to work on that. How much is it going to cost? And... I mean, the studio was great, so I was kind of sold on it, but... It was the, it was the Oceanway studio, wasn't yeah, it? The Beach Boys. It was lovely. Yeah. But after, after Kid A and Amnesiac, was there a band decision to do something different, to come back with the more direct, perhaps shorter songs, rockier? Was there, was there a definite feeling that we should do something new? Well, no, it was, it was more like, let's carry on where we're, where we're at. I mean, I guess it was more direct because we, we assembled it faster and we're using a different method, but it wasn't like, let's make a more direct record, I don't think. But it was, it was more to do with making a record about capturing a performance, not like endless um, editing and re-editing and, 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 and stuff. So it was very much like a spawn, capturing a moment, which is, I guess, more pop, maybe. don't know. And the songs are back to like uh, something when I was young and the punk ethic of... Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> when I was younger, you know, we used to have those three and a half minute pop tunes. Yeah. Well, I, I had a thing about that. I had a thing about that when Darryl. we... Daryl? Daryl? <laughs> you'd go into, uh, you know, after, after doing the take and you'd, you'd run into the control room and I'd shout to the engineer, how long's that, Daryl? And he'd say, five minutes 60. Uh, five minutes 50. Oh, okay, let's cut out two minutes. Because we were trying to do everything short. I went, I went back and, and, and realised all the Beatles records were really, all the songs were really short, which was something of a surprise. You know, Happiness is a Warm Gun is, I think, just over three minutes. Is which is scary, because it feels like it's about ten. Yeah, it feels like an epic. Yeah. Why Hail to the Thief? I need to ask it, because well, I know there's a book about Bush and the way that he stole the election and Michael Moore's there's been There's many talking, books, talking, actually. Yes. And you could also be about the internet, I guess. Yeah. And there's also a theme that you talk about um, people possessing other people's souls to, yeah. to control them. Yeah. Is it all of those things? Or yeah, I mean, it's, I, li I like this. I like the, the, I like the last one because uh, it's just, this is an idea that Dante had. That's my literary reference for the week. That's good. Thank you. Uh, that, that certain people, um, they do things that are so bad they're still alive, but their their souls have already gone, so they're sort of essentially possessed. I I, I think I don't know about you, but I've actually met people like that. You you meet them in in this business, Whoa. yes, yeah, and it comes real quick open up your hand, and um, so that's at the moment. Hell to the thief is about that for me. I'm really into that idea. It's much more about that than the bush thing, because it's sort of it's everywhere, and everybody says it, and everybody. I mean, you walk around New York, and every other block in New York has got someone who's called fuck bush. On the wall. It's not like, you know, we're on our own or anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Particularly consensual. Uh -huh.
Now, a recurring theme, and it comes on on Hell to the Thief as well, is sort of the, you speak out, but you also have a bit of the ostrich thing about, I'll sort of bury my head until it passes by. Is that a fair comment? I think the record is a conflict between being incredibly angry and being so tired, you just, you, wanna, you want to give up. You want to give up even thinking about it, because it's, totally it's totally out of your hands anyway, la la la. But that's the trick, you see, that's how they get you. That's, when people stop participating in democracy, that's when fascism occurs. Absolutely. And that's when idiots get in charge. But do you really feel that you, you, you can't change anything, that you can't no, stand... No, I don't. No, I, I, I don't. But, but, but the record was very much in, involved with, with feeling that, yeah. Now, finally, um, you're hailed as one of the most important bands in the world. Does that phrase mean anything to you guys? I mean, when you win awards and things, I guess it must recompense for what you've done. Is it something you think about? Um, yeah, I think about it when I'm, when I'm doing my son's nappies. <laughs> son? I'm son. A I really generation. shouldn't be dealing with your shit right now. <laughs> I'm far too important. <laughs> and there's no, not been a greatest hits yet. Will there be? No. Can you envisage? No. Only when, when the band when is over, need, that's the only time that a greatest hits When is, we need the money. Yeah, when we need the money. Yes. <laughs> no, when, it, when the band is over, because otherwise it's, it's terrible. I can't understand, like, greatest hits half because, you know, like Queen. Queen did their greatest hits, and the first one is impeccable, isn't yeah. it? It's absolutely genius. And then the rest was all rubbish after that. Well, it was, kind of, wasn't it? You can start a debate off in a minute. No, okay, it's not rubbish. It's not rubbish, but it's not Seven Seas of Rye. It's not, you know... That, that's, that's the old, uh, the Ben syndrome, that is, man. 
What's that? We'll have exactly the same. Well, probably, but well, it yeah, should but be at the end of the career. Everything after OK Computer was packed. No, 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 but we haven't done a great hits album, you see. It's, 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 once you do, it's like, it, there's, there's a trade-off there. There's a, there's a, yeah, there's yeah. a creative trade-off. Like but Blur did a greatest hits and they've done a good record. But how so. are you going to do it if Tom doesn't ever listen to any of the old records? How are you going to choose? <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to decide? We'll, we'll just, delegate. We'll delegate it. Delegate it. Yeah. I'll someone do it. in the office. Yeah, exactly. Straw Thanks pole. so much. Yeah. Thank you very much, guys.
Ray. Colin. Hello. Bonsoir. Hello. Bonsoir. And good evening and welcome to Paris. Thank you. Thank you very and much. And thank you all for coming. Even though two of you sitting here tonight will not be appearing. Mm. You'll be at the bar, but not actually playing. Yes. And are you upset about that at all? It's good for us, though. We actually get to see um, a radio head show. Is that? We never get to see. That well, must be weird. Side, anyway. You don't get to see that, <laughs> do you? Yeah, I mean, it's something we tried in America in a radio station and found it to be fun and so we did another one and then we decided to do one in France as well it was just yeah it, it, it's just it's just easier for us to do and still fun and plus we get to uh, work at songs and and get different things out of them I suppose um, and and have that thing of not quite know what we're doing or how we're going to play the song far more which is a nice fear to have really so the Los Angeles experience was good and it was Nigel who insisted you all went over there I guess and I think this time you worked much faster, rather than the compiling the album from a hard drive like before. We did, yeah. yeah. I mean, when, actually in Los Angeles itself, I mean, we were there for a fortnight and we did a track a day, which is something we've never done, which is great because, you know, you, you're very unselfconscious about what you do. You don't have that chance to sit down and overanalyze everything. And just, everything just has this real momentum. I think that comes across in the performances. Tell me a little bit about, uh, if you will, about Radiohead.tv. I mean, what's, what's it going to be? And can I have a job? Oh, yeah. Can I have a job on it? Sure. What, what's it going to well, be? Well, yeah, we're, we're very non-discriminating about quality output. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but that's kind of part of what it's about, is it's trying to sort of compile lots of things that are being sent to us by, like, uh, students, fans, artists, whatever, and trying to get away from, like, just to have something... To try and put the spontaneous and the throwaway back into something, sort of the visual and the music thing, and get away from the sort of formulaic and programmed and staid and uh, commercially couched on either side by adverts or whatever, and, and, and super expensive, which means you have to second guess everything you're doing if you're dealing with like quarter of a million pounds to just put something on the screen, which is obscene. You know, you spend more money doing something for one song than costs to do an entire record, which is what our business should really be about. Now, you guys have known each other for such a long time, and you're all still, I presume, and that's just a good, you know, you're good actors, that you're all still mates. Is there a secret recipe? I mean, mates fall out, especially bands who live in each other's pockets. Is there something that you're aware of that you do do or you don't do so that it does stay happy? I don't think we ever really fell out, actually. I think, you know, I think there are points where we became rather more 
distant from each other. But I mean, actually going through the whole process of, of recording Kid A, I think we actually we started we started talking to each other once again, and that's key to that really, just being open with each other. And uh, I think we're quite respectful of each other's musicality and and ideas. So I think you know that's that's a good basis. Now that there are dads in the band, does that change things? That you you can't go on the road for two years now and live in hotels. Does that does it change things? Well, the later show starts with it galling. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I asked the other boys the last question. If you can ever envisage a best of Radiohead coming out one day, they didn't think it was a good idea. But like a four track EP <laughs> with like <laughs> even a third, with four track covers. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah okay. Modest. With nobody does it better on, possibly. Um, yeah. Yes, I remember that. Yeah. So, um, best of. I don't know. Tom Walt always wanted to call one of our records the best driving music in the world ever. So maybe, you know, maybe we should do that instead. We'll see. Okay been done, hasn't it? I think Probably it has, has yeah. <laughs> Don't tell him it was a good idea. <laughs> All the good ideas have been taken well, from you until go. you come up with another one. Thanks very much for joining us. I just have to say, like, it's a magic. It's a magical experience for us to have you here and to see what you're doing tonight. And I feel like a tiny little 14-year-old boy again. So thank you for being here and giving us such pleasure. Sincerely. Thank you, Ray. Thank you, Ray. <laughs>
disco. Yeah, it's disco. So far, this is disco. Et ce soir, nous sommes bien entourés. Ladies and gentlemen, Air, Pet Shop Boys, Archive, Drag Zone. Est-ce que vous voulez encore Ah Je crois qu'ils veulent encore. Ok. Turn me on. Ouais, euh. Ouais, ouais, euh. Ouais, euh. One, two, three. 
rows of houses all burning down on me. I can feel the blue hands touching me. All those things are too position. All those things I wonder swallow. Fade out again. Fade out. This machine will not communicate these thoughts. I'm going to do a song, uh, this is a song called Fog, and we did this, uh, we did a version of this, and uh, it wasn't very good, so this is a better version of it, unless I cock it up, in which case it's not.
the sewers Grow up fast Grow up fast Anything you want It can be done oh, oh, Did you go back? Did you go back? Good night, everybody. Thank you. Tom and Johnny, can we have some more, please? We're hungry. This is um, called uh, Karma, please.
Radiohead, Music Planet Tonight. Pour moi, c'était un grand moment de la vie. Je l'espère pour vous aussi. Et pour la toute dernière fois, mesdames et messieurs, pour la toute dernière fois, the last time, thank you for watching et merci d'être avec nous. Au revoir du réservoir. Peut-être encore un jour, bientôt, je ne sais pas, mais merci quand même. And ciao. Bye bye. Incorruptible et Arte ont été vos guides sur Music Planet Tonight. Cette nuit.